Hello, I'm Dr. Pat Bona, and I'm here today to share with you some of the more detailed posture prepping techniques that you can do to further improve your horse's posture, performance, and overall well-being. So we're going to talk today about rotator cuff issues in horses. Yes, we're familiar about hearing rotator cuff issues in athletes, but I see a lot of patients come in who come in with a stiff neck, tight between the shoulder blade, even headaches, but it's actually not their neck. It's because they have postural strain to the rotator cuff. Chronic postural strain from anterior head tilt, from our shoulder slouching forward, which then produces myofascial pain pattern and then can predispose us to a true rotator cuff tear or um, other injuries into our elbow or into our spine. So with horses, the same thing can happen. What can happen is that due to postural changes, asymmetries, especially down in the shoulder, we always need to look for what I call the red flags, the dents and dings and scar tissue. Well, horses are often kicked in the point of the shoulder, kicked in the point of the buttock, run into things, and that affects a muscle that goes from essentially the back of the jaw down the neck can affect the whole cervical spine and into the shoulder and then up into the withers. So it affects the whole upper quadrant of the horse and it's very, very common. So we always want to look for those red flags, dead stings, scar tissue, white hairs, loss of hair, because there's signs of trauma and just because it's healed on the outside doesn't mean it's healed on the inside. So we want to remember with horses, they don't have a collarbone. So it's just the ligaments and the muscles that are holding the shoulder blade, which is all through here, onto the horse. And we talk about the horse having a sling apparatus. So they shock absorb through that soft tissue of their shoulders. Well, when this uh, becomes damaged, a bru the uh, hematoma or bruise and has a dent, it creates scar tissue. So it essentially brings the shoulder forward, kind of like you're carrying your purse on your shoulder all the time. So that creates a postural imbalance. Well, if the shoulder's forward, or even both shoulders are forward, you'll actually see the chest will be more narrow, and sometimes they rotate in. And if we have that, it's very difficult to bend and use our neck. So what people will tell me is that the horse doesn't want to bend to the left. That can be that he doesn't have space to bend to the left, but more than likely, he has myofascial pain, trigger points, restrictions in the key muscles of the rotator cuff, which is the infraspinatus on the horse and human and supraspinatus. So there's a scapular spine, there's a bony ridge down the front of portion of the shoulder blade, and that's where you find these muscles. Sometimes you'll see horses are really overdeveloped here, and that gives you a sign that there might be a rotator cuff strain there. You may also see that um, the horse stands with more forward symmetry or asymmetry of that shoulder again up into the neck compared to the other side. And you may see a horse that has a discrepancy between the um, front foot, two front feet and that is typically a time that you'll see that the horse has some strain to the rotator cuff. So what will happen is that lots of times horses have difficulty with their lateral work because the rotator cuff externally rotates my shoulder and his shoulder and abducts it. So in order to go ahead and turn, they need to be able to do that. If those muscles are tight, the body goes to the path of least resistance, whether it's less pain or it's less range of motion, so the horse won't want to do that. So they'll end up getting stiff. They may not bend to that side, or sometimes if they do bend, they go like this, and they shift their weight to the opposite shoulder. So the horse might bend, or they may overbend, or what people say that they're popping their shoulder because they don't want to weight or contract these muscles and shock absorb, because the nervous system is very smart. It's going to protect itself. So, when we're doing the basic posture prep system, we always work from the back to the front, through the top line, and through the core zone. So as we're coming into the shoulder, you want to make sure 
that you get in and have your nice strokes across that shoulder blade. First and foremost, to loosen up any adhesions and restrictions between the skin and the muscle fibers. And you want to make sure that he has a little bit of a, you know, irregularity or dent in there. So I want to make sure I go across the front of that shoulder blade and loosen up any of those restrictions because that's most often where that dent is. And that was a hematoma which will affect his shoulder posture. Is that very good, huh? And one of the big things we want to do is that a core technique is starring the far. So the cap of the scapula and the point of the hip is the functional axes of rotation. So there's muscles that stem off from these areas and we want all of those spokes, essentially, of that wheel to be happy. So we want to make sure that we take care of the infraspinatus and supraspinatus. I typically say you want to do three legs of the star so you can pick and choose and carve things out to help get that neck pretty. Yes, it is just the right amount of little dust in there to show us a good line, huh? So then I'll come to the front so I get a better angle um, for my own biomechanics. And then come up into that supraspinatus muscle all the way up into his withers, down into that dent. I might want to come up into another spoke in the infraspinatus muscle and then down into the front. You can do as many spokes, spokes as you want. As you can see, he's pretty happy about them. And when you get into that cap of the scapula, it really makes a big difference because that's where those spokes are anchored from. So that's a really nice way to go ahead and improve your horse's shoulder function and your horse's the muscles of the shoulder symmetry to help break up these patterns of asymmetrical shoulders, which cause asymmetrical um, neck ability to bend and move. And it's very easy to go ahead and do some special posture prepping for your horse's rotator cuff muscles.